All right, super nerds. So today we're going to talk about co-dominance and incomplete dominance. It's not simple inheritance. That was the last one, but you'll be surprised to find that the video itself is actually a bit simpler because now you're an expert in Punnett squares. So incomplete dominance, what does this mean? So basically, in incomplete dominance, neither allele is dominant over the other. All right, so what that means is you get, when you've got two alleles, you'll get a different, so you've got the dominant, or you've got one heterozygote, sorry, one homozygote, the other homozygote, but the heterozygote phenotype, phenotype, sorry, will be an intermediate of the two. There's a very good example. So um, when we look at an individual for something which is simple inheritance, we can't tell if it's, if it's expressing the dominant characteristic, we can't tell straight away just by looking at it whether or not it is homozygous dominant or heterozygous. We can tell if it's homozygous recessive, but we can't tell if it's homozygous or heterozygous for the dominance. With incomplete dominance, we can. For example, the Japanese five o'clock or four o'clock flowers. Um, in, and we see this is just another version of the Punnett square. Uh, the, the notation's a little different. Uh, when it is incomplete dominance, we use the same letter for um, the allele. So it, it gets the, this one here, okay? That's the gene. But the alleles up, get up here, and you'll see that they are both capitalized. They're both capitalized because one isn't dominant over the other. That's just a simple little thing, and we'll, we'll move on from there. So, for example, this is incomplete dominance. We have CR, CR. So here we're, we're going... This is the F1 generation, we're crossing these. You have one in four will be red. Cool, which is this one here. Two in four will be pink, which is this bad boy here. And one in four, which will be will be white, which is this guy here. Now what we actually see is, you can see that it is a, um, that it is a, an intermediate. So you've got red, white and pink is in the middle. Um, so here we go, you've got the red allele, red allele is the homozygous, um, and we get the we get the heterozygous offspring. We then cross the heterozygous offsprings together and it gives us this. So the phenotype for the offspring is pink and it actually has to do with the amount of pigment which is produced. So in the homozygous one, a lot of pigment is made. In the home in the homozygous uh, white one, no pigments made, and in the homozygous, sorry, in the heterozygous, it's just that in the middle. And so some is made, some isn't. Um, then we can move on to something called codominance. We're going to look at two examples of codominance here. Um, so basically, and that should be a, you're not going to see it, but that should be a, a hyphen there. So when a codominant relationship happens, neither is, again, neither is dominant over the other. But instead of getting an intermediate trait, you get a mixture of traits, which is pretty cool. So there was a row and cow on the first slide. That is an example of co-dominance. Or the tortoise shell cat, which is super adorable. Um, and here we have a row and, cat, a row and cow. So we can see it's big R, big R, big W, big W. Put it together, you get R and W, and you get a mixture of white and red, but it is not that intermediate. Um, we can predict it with Punnett squares. It's pretty simple. So here's a horse. We've got a red horse, white horse. This is the way it's actually done, by the way, with the lower cases and upper cases. Um, you can do it the same as the other one, though, if you want, and see R or CW. If you want to do it with those, that's how you should do it, or you do it this way. They're, they're your options. Um, so we've got our our, this is backwards, the male should be up this side. Um, so you've got your reds, so a quarter of them are going to be red. But half of them are going to be um, your wrong horse, and a quarter of them is going to be white. So that's, um, here, just one second. And here we can see it as a Punnett square. So here's our two reds, here's our whites. There are all our offspring, so all of our offspring are Rowan, Rowan, so that's the F1 generation. The F2 generation, so we cross one F1 plus an F1, times an F1, we find we get that one 
we get that mixture that we expected to get from over here. So here's our Rowan horses, our red horse, and our white horse. And here are the ratios. Um, so that's actually really simple. I hope it's making a lot of sense. Let's look at a human example, blood types. So we've got four blood types. We have A, B, AB, and O. Okay, so the blood type gene has three alleles. So it's another step up in complication. Um, and basically, it, it, it controls what type of antibodies are on the, oh, sorry, antigens, what type of antigens are on the outside of blood cells. So you can have an A allele, a B allele, or an O allele. Um, you, you have two of each allele. So there's six different possibilities. Okay, so you can be six different genotypic possibilities. So you can be AA or AO. You can be BB or BO, AB or OO. Now, very interestingly, you can only be four phenotypes. You can be A, B, AB, or O. So if you are AO, okay, this is a dominant recessive relationship. Okay, you're A, it's a simple inheritance. This would be simple inheritance. You're BB, BO, you're still phenotype is B. But here we have codominance. So you see it gets a bit complex. So you A, B. And here we have just the recessive homozygote, which is OO. Now, we can figure out, it's a bit trickier than with standard dominance patterns, but we can figure this out. So basically, sometimes the phenotype and genotypes are the same, and we can't tell the difference. You can't tell which genotype you have. That's for A and B. But the other ones, we can tell you exactly what your genotype is. Um, so basically, what I've just said here, AA could be AA or AO. BB could be BB or BO. Um, so we can do a, post, we can do a Punnett square. Um, and that looks like this. So the possible alleles could be this. All right, so this is a Punnett square for all three. Of course, that's not how it's going to happen in real life. It would be different. It would actually look like this one here. So if here we have someone who is O and crossed with someone who is heterozygous for A and O, we can see that we will get half of the offspring will be A, but it is heterozygous A, and the other half of the offspring will be homozygous O. Okay, you can do that for any combination. And that's blood type, and yeah, we'll see you in class.